ियनिटी member of 18th lok sabha representing the shillong constituency is from voice of the people party uh really welcome you sir and thank you for providing you. your valuable time here okay so my first question to you is where do you see shillong in 2030 well i see shillong as uh, you know being restored as one of the um you know educational hub of the north east yeah provide provided you mm-hmm. know the the governments of the day you know uh take a very decisive uh, decision yeah and uh, ensuring that uh, whatever glory you know the past glory that shillong you know had in terms of education you mm-hmm. know uh, regains its glory and uh, yeah. all is possible provided you are focused you have a vision hmm. you know so that is what i see but it has okay. to start it has to start today yes Correct. yeah okay so one more question is rising in my mind that uh, i have seen one report of niti aayog and according to niti aayog bihar jharkhand and meghalaya remains the state with highest number of poor people so how will you work uh, on this yes so well it's very true and it's very unfortunate uh, mm-hmm. meghalaya is uh, one of the you know one of the 10 states small 10 states in the country uh, right. and when you look at uh, meghalaya in terms of its uh, factor endowments it mm-hmm. is a state which is <clears throat> sitting on top of wealth yeah. okay it's um, mm-hmm. mineral resources or natural resources even for the matter human resource uh, mm-hmm. so what i it is like i said it is unfortunate that uh, we are considered to be one of the poorest states but i think mm-hmm. that is a, a wake up call for you know for the for the political leadership to mm-hmm. see what is wrong i mm-hmm. mean it is impossible that you know when you sit on top of wealth but yet you are poor so something is terribly wrong and mm. uh, for me i would say one of the major factor is that uh, you know of course corruption is one of the major factor and right. uh, the slack on the part of the government of the day mm-hmm. you know and also um, it calls for the people of our state to rise yeah. up you know and uh we have gone right down so mm-hmm. there's no other way but to rise up so i see hope in that yeah okay so so uh, we are just moving ahead and uh, i'll be talking about sir law and order over there like i have heard few uh, like i have heard in news channels and i have also read papers about that there is a Uh, i mean no rules and regulations about uh, law and order i think one leader of uh, some party or some uh, i mean it uh, he was a leader and he was brutally killed over there and uh, no uh, but you are talking about those sdg you are coming now to law and order no no i am talking about law and order that how will you just uh, Uh, manage all these you have a responsibility on your uh, like shoulder so you have to manage all these like i'm talking about that see we are not in power so i think that question would be you know would be best suited to the you know to the uh, party and to the government which is in power mm-hmm. yes i i understand yes. that i understand that but what do you say about that if like i'm talking about you that if you will have to manage all these then what rules no, you it, will impose and all you see when uh, you you you're talking about law and order well it is not what you know what the media 
people say about Meghalaya. Meghalaya is mm-hmm. still one of the peace, most peaceful states in the country, okay. mm-hmm. uh, except for stray in- incident. And mm-hmm. uh, this is happening everywhere. In fact, I'm in this in Delhi right now, and such incident goes unreported. Many which are even worse than what is happening in the state. Mm-hmm. So there's no doubt. Yes, uh, for any development, uh, there has to be, uh, you know, peace and tranquility. Mm-hmm must be there but then of yeah. course uh, Meghalaya is not uh, you know it's not bad at all in terms of the law and order yeah of yeah. course it's a beautiful place it's a beautiful place I mean tourists are uh, like always there always there I mean uh, I think 12 months tourists are there uh, so it's yes, a very yes. beautiful place but the thing is ki, you, it's uh, it's about the uh, you know rules and regulations and sometimes it happens okay you are correct uh, then I'm moving to the situations of school in Shillong particularly. Mm. What do you think that uh, is there any need to just enhance the situations of school over there or uh, no. the schools are right at their place? The schools are there and in fact, like I said from the beginning, Meghalaya is used to be the, cap- the educational hub of the Northeast, mm-hmm. and in fact, rather for the eastern part of the country. And mm-hmm. so we have a very strong foundation. Okay. It is simply uh, what is required immediately is to, you know, to revamp the whole education system to, mm-hmm. um, you know, to come up with a, a policy which is futuristic. And mm-hmm. when we talk about school, and it requires a total revamping right from the, you know, from the primary to the uh, lower primary, upper primary, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And uh, and also to stop commercializing of education. But once you start commercializing, then you have all these players, you know, who don't care about education. All they yeah. care is, you know, to make money out of education. And for which it is uh, a sector where a lot of people have used that sector to make money, but not mm-hmm. to build, you know, uh, uh, to build a future for the for the people. So, and it requires a concerted effort on the part of of all, you know, mm-hmm. all stakeholders to ensure that yeah. education is not, sir, you know, sir, yeah, sir, it's not being commercialized. Yes. Yes, sir. I completely agree with you that uh, commercialization should be stopped, and then after only we will able to give quality education to the students. But as you said, that Meghalaya has a strong foundation of education and known as the education hub in northeastern area. But uh, if we talk about the school education or uh, schools, uh, there is an issue I have read in some reports also that uh, the attendance level of teachers and stu- students as well. Both are very low, around 40%, even less than 40%. So what are the issues? If it is known as the education hub, then why the attendance level is very low? You see, that is the uh, the, the issue which I, which I said, you know, uh, where it requires a concerted effort of one and all, starting mm-hmm. from, let's say, from the governments, then the various private stakeholders, you know, mm-hmm. to be serious when it comes to education. I mean, yeah. that they should, you know, they should, uh, I mean, it, they should mean business in, you know, in what they're doing and ensuring that, you know, the uh, infrastructure is in, in, is in properly in place. Uh, teachers, you know, teachers are there maintaining whatever the ratio that is required. And so all that is required, not just, you know, uh, for example, setting up school, but then with no infrastructure, or even mm-hmm. when you have infrastructure, as in the case of some government school, where they have the infrastructure, but uh, because of, uh, you know, the lack of, uh, for example, I remember mm-hmm. where in one of the government school where there are more teachers than students. Uh, whereas in a private school there are more students than teachers mm-hmm. so right. what i what i see is this you know in some uh, for example in some of the village you may find mm-hmm. two three schools 
So yeah. it would much would be much better. A solution would be to club all these schools together, and mm. uh, so that to ensure it's uh, you know that it runs effectively and efficiently, and mm. making full use of whatever the resource that's you know that they have. So that is a solution uh, that I yeah. see. You know, in where in like I, again, I repeat, where in some villages you find no mm-hmm. schools. In some villages, there are more than two, three schools. Both yeah. government, then some private run, some mission run institution. So if mm-hmm. that can be clubbed together, that would be good for you know, uh, especially in the school and especially in the rural areas. Yes. Yeah. And to so stop. As- yeah, mushrooming of schools, especially in the urban area. Yeah. Yeah. So as you highlighted the point of government schools and private school here, you have compared both the schools. Like in government school, the number of students is less, the number of teachers are more than in private school. It's completely opposite. So why? Why people are not uh, want? Why people don't want to send their children to government school? Like. Are the government schools not providing quality for education, or what are the problem? Why people don't want to send their children there? There. Yeah, you you just uh, said it correctly. In the government institutions, you know, some of the appointments, uh, I would say, is questionable. You know, mm-hmm. that is where I said corruption. When I say corruption, mm-hmm. it's not just corruption in monetary terms, but corruption. You know. Uh, for example, as in the selection of uh, quality teachers, hmm, hmm. teachers who are really dedicated, teachers who see that uh, teaching is their calling, not just, yeah. you know, uh, to get job, you know. Yeah. So because teaching is one uh, profession, just like, you know, uh, nurses where or doctors where there has to be a calling. Don't yeah. take it as you know, as uh, you know, just for the sake of getting a job. So mm-hmm. that is where uh, some serious effort, some serious uh, introspection uh, needs mm-hmm. to take place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So when we talk about schools and when we talk about people, there is always one thing in mind that uh, what kind of teachers are there in the school. So if we talk about the government school, there is always an examination for teachers to just teach in school. They, they have to give examination and then they have to enter the government school to teach the children. So when we talk about the private school, there there is always, always a quality check that uh, government school teachers are always uh, in a degraded form. Like if I, not about all government school, but if we talk about few government school, the teachers are not up to the mark. There's always a question in their face that how they will teach students. And I have seen various videos. I'm not talking about uh, simply of Shillong or Meghalaya. I'm, talk I'm talking about whole India. I have <laughs> seen videos where teachers are not able to spell the spelling of Apple. So it's a big question about the government teachers and how they are teaching students and how the government is appointing them to che- teach the children. So, how will India work on this point? So, I'm just, I'm like, uh, it's a little bit a worried point over here that how will India just gain uh, the marks in uh, government school criteria? Yeah, see, that is where, you know, this is a problem, I think, not just in the state of Meghalaya, across, yeah, across, across the India. nation. Mm-hmm. Yes, and... Uh, So uh, some mechanism has to be devised to really ensure and to check that, uh, you know, the the teachers, you know, uh, Mm. are appointed through, you know, through the right um, process. And, uh, but at the same time, um, what I see is that, uh, you know, we should ensure that uh, whenever a policy uh, is you know, is being adopted or policy mm. is uh, contemplated. Mm, mm. I think we must ensure that, uh, you know, in a country like India, which is so diverse, mm-hmm. okay, so it, you know, there is a diversity, you know, for example, you know, across the, across the mm, yeah. country. And so keeping in mind that diversity, I think some, um, uh, 
you know, we must ensure that, uh, for example, Northeast cultural, uh, there's a lot of cultural, you know, diversity yeah. compared to the rest of India. So mm -hmm. keeping all that in mind, you should, yeah. you know, policy has to be framed in such a manner that you give freedom, you give the liberty to the different region or different state mm -hmm. to come up with their own policy. Uh, right. Even, for example, in selection of teachers, for example, you know, in the state like Meghalaya, where mm -hmm. you, when we have like, for example, the, you know, the JNV school, right? So yeah. where you have teachers who do not even know the language of, uh, you know, the state. So it yeah. would be good if you appoint teachers who know the lang also the language of the state, who know the culture of the state, so that Very. when they, you know, they, when they stand before the children, mm. at least they know the background, they know the culture. So, Very. and connecting with the students would be much easier than, you know, yeah. sending someone who has no idea about the culture, the, mm. um, you know, the cultural values of the state. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I mean, those are some things that need to be looked into. So, any kind of uniformity in, especially in a country like India, is not good. Yeah. So, or in other words, centralization that we are seeing today, this move mm -hmm. towards centralization of everything, this is going to be right. devastating for the, you know, for the future, uh, yeah. be it in education, be it in many sector. So, correct, correct. especially in the mm -hmm. field of education, yes. One more and last question to you, sir, because uh, we have Venita Ali. Last question is, I have read an article that migration in Meghalaya is the cause of degradation. Do you agree with this point? Like people Migration are, of what? Degradation of development. Like uh, uh, if we talk about particularly Meghalaya, people from Bihar, people from Jharkhand, people from uh, West Bengal are there. They are migrating from their own state and they are uh, just living in Meghalaya. And due to this, the employment criteria or we can say the real, uh, you know, the core Meghalaya is... Uh, Losing its presence. I have read an article. And for that reason, that is why you know, as a party, we we want that uh, we're going to uh, uh, fight for this uh, the inner line permit. You know, to ensure that uh, you know people from outside the state do not come and take over jobs, which you know, which our people could take up. Well, mm -hmm. uh, of course. Uh, we cannot, uh, you know, in a, a country like India, hmm. well, we cannot uh, prevent yeah. you know, people from coming. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, in a state like ours, which is small, uh, where we have uh, even in terms of population. So yeah. I think uh, the interests of our people should come first. But Correct. again, a mechanism has to be worked out. And one such mechanism is the inner line permit to prevent people coming. Of course, they're most welcome to come as tourists. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, which is we are more than uh, happy to have them. But then mm -hmm. to come as workers, that has to be, you know, to to be checked. Otherwise, yeah. uh, you know, our, where, where, will, right? where will our people go? So, but of course, uh, there are areas where we do need, you know, people with skills when we don't have them. But then mm -hmm. I think, uh, in you know, the right approach would be to ensure mm -hmm. that our people are not, uh, you know, um, uh, they have their fair share of the, you know, of employment in our state. Yeah. And uh, to ensure that people from outside the states, you know, are checked. They can come, yeah. you know, maybe as tourists, but mm -hmm. uh, and not to take up those, uh, you know, jobs which our people could do it. Yes. It. So why I mean, you see because yeah, in other states, yeah. you know, the the wages are very very low. So when they mm -hmm. come there, at least they they get a better wage. So yeah. that that is why. So they really put our people in the back foot, and that mm -hmm. has to be, you know has to be stopped that okay so thank you so much uh, like you you spoke very well about the sustainable development goals and you did spoke very well about the shillong and meghalaya that how these uh, the state will get developed 
and of course the shillong is a very beautiful place and you also told that the tourists are all, always there and and uh, i think uh, what you spoke about that how will be shillong in 2030 i think this will be fulfilled and i think you will contribute to this also so very thankful to you for providing this time and uh, yeah. i think i think shillong will be the most beautiful place in 2030 and you will be contributing to it thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you for your valuable thank you. time thank you 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 th